Hi everyone, Styx here with another Division Survival video. Today, I'm going to run through my crafting strategies in Survival. There are many different crafting strategies, so use this as a guide to help develop your own. Remember, the great thing about Survival is the variety, particularly with your gear. So, do what you feel is best for your game style and enjoy each session as it unfolds. Regardless if I'm doing PvP or PvE, I have a few pre-planned routes I follow. So I recommend you learn a few and plan them in advance, so when you spawn in, you know exactly where you want to go. I generally have two crafting sessions, at most three. The first one will be for initial gear, and that's always conducted very close to a spawn-in safe house. The second optional one in the light zone is if I need to craft some additional gear, uh, you know, whether it's purple level or not. And the final crafting session is in the DZ itself. You only need one in the DZ, and that's after you've collected uh, some div tech and other resources to build your final set. Okay, so let's have a look at the first crafting stage. This will be a safe house that is close to a spawn in safe house and the reason is there's a couple items we want to craft first off that we cannot craft the further we push into the light zone the first thing i do is equip the best gear that i've picked up and trash everything else that i don't need to determine what's best for me i always look for firearms and stamina i disregard electronics altogether So if the gear is high in firearms, higher than what I'm currently equipped, I'll equip it. If it's high in stamina, I'll equip that. There is a balance sometimes. Sometimes you have to choose whether you want higher stam or higher firearms, but try and find an equal balance between the two. So now that we've equipped our best gear possible it's moving on to crafting and the first thing we want to craft is an extended mag extended mags will roll an additional 40 up to 60 percent capacity increase so in my opinion it's a must-have the next item is the 12 times scope which can range from an additional six to eight percent headshot damage now that we've crafted those two green items we can upgrade all of our materials from green to blue So now that they're all upgraded, I move on to crafting my two filters. And I do the filters early because sometimes there's an opportunity to go into a contaminated zone and the gear in contaminated zones can be pretty good. And then I'll craft an additional med kit because having three med kits is better than having two. If I've got enough materials, I'll build the pulse and the turret about now. Now by now, if you haven't been fortunate enough to pick up a decent AR, I'll craft one now. Even a green one is fine. It's enough to get you into and through a fight to pick up some more gear. And with this loadout and this setup, I feel comfortable enough to hit up some landmarks, go through some mobs and collect as much loot as possible and push into the DZ. Then I'll make sure that I equip the mags and any other equipment. I make sure that I equip my uh, skills. There's been a number of times when I've just run out of the safe house and I've forgotten to put it all on. Once I hit the dark zone, my first task is to pick up as much div tech as possible. Um, there are a number of places in the dark zone that you can pick up div tech without having to engage with a lot of mobs. So check out the map, understand the map, study it, know where this div tech is and go pick up the strategically placed div tech so that you don't have to fight too much. Also, it doesn't slow you down. I like a very quick and fast pace. Uh, I don't like to be bogged down with a lot of mobs uh, when I'm farming. I want to just get in and out as quickly as possible.
I'm aiming for about seven or eight DivTech caches. That will usually give me everything I need, convert all of my gear and craft all my gear to yellow gear. And that'll be my one and only time in a um, dark zone safe house to do my crafting. So now we get into the crafting in the DZ and I don't want to sort through my gear. I don't want to equip what's best. That's just a waste of time for me. I want to trash everything because I feel that I've got enough resources that I can build a full yellow kit. The first thing I'm going to do is craft a weapon and that weapon is always an ACR. And I choose the ACR because it's going to give me a random talent. If you choose the G36, it is locked into the focus talent. And I think it's a waste to have a talent that only works on uh, skill cooldowns. Next, I'll craft up an M44 and then move on to the weapon mods. Then I'll make a rugged uh, mini reflex scope for the ACR once again crit hit chance and I'll make a couple loud vent breaks because they come with crit hit damage. Then there's a small grip for the ACR, crit hit damage and then I'll pick the Heck 15 for the M44 because of the accuracy and two uh, random bonus bonuses on that one. Now we'll move on to armor. Generally as a habit, I start at the bottom of the list and I build the holster first. And I do the holster because it always gives you three fixed attributes. So that's handy. You get that extra firearms and stamina. I then work up the list towards knee pads, gloves, and what I'm always looking for is to maintain the balance of firepower and stamina. This is the part that I love and hate about survival is the randomness of the roles. Uh, there's been times when I've just had all electronics uh, gear rolled and then I have to rethink my strategy. Um, but if you are always aiming for the firepower and stamina um, end then you're going to find yourself with a pretty powerful build if I find that I've got too much electronics that's fine I still equip everything because I want to make sure that I've got all my armor uh, built and then if there's something there that I want to re-roll I can re-roll if I have the resources So in this example here, I've got a lot of firepower, but I'm very low in stamina. I'm only around the 1500 mark. So to pump that up, I will build five stamina gear mods, uh, push those numbers up and get a better balance. Once you've done this a few times, you get into this rhythm and the whole exercise is about five minutes or a bit under five minutes uh, of crafting everything doing a couple re-rolls, but you should have enough resources and enough div tech on you that you don't have to go out and farm for gear again. And you've got enough gear to uh, take on landmarks solo, uh, take on hunters, and if you're doing PvP, uh, take on players as well.
all right so thanks for watching um, hopefully you've been able to take one or two things out of this video to help you in your uh, survival sessions and we'll see you again sometime yes